We dished on the big Saturday earlier this week. Now it's time to talk about the big Friday, the big carryover, $285,000 plus in the early pick five already at Aqueduct. And to help us get through, we'll see how challenging it is. I love your single. We'll get to that in a little bit. But David Levitch going to go through the early pick five with us. And David, million dollar pool in the pick five is what I'm expecting. This is as big as it gets for a Friday afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. This is a rare pick five carryover, and it's actually the second one of the year at Aqueduct. So they had some crazy results on Sunday, and we get some a nice, it should be, I would say, over a million dollars, a nice pick five pool to play into on a card that, I mean, a pick five that looks looks like some challenging races, but look like there's a few favorites it might be tough to beat. So we'll see. Yeah, there's probably a, a pitfall here or there is uh, certainly there were on Sunday when nobody picked, pick, picked five, but the 285,000 carryover, 15% on new money, so good takeout on the money that's going to be bet and fairly approachable. I mean, this is definitely not a situation I can imagine we're going to be seeing a bunch of big seven, eight hundred, even four figure caveman tickets. As always, it comes down on where you end up singling and we'll go through the sequence, uh, but we'll take a peek uh, before we do at your ticket. Fifty four dollars. Now, there are going to be some chalk in those first three legs. Uh for sure, maybe at least one odds on horse, I would say, maybe two. You're willing to try to beat them while using, which I don't mind as much because your single in leg four is the six to one fourth choice. And that certainly has an opportunity to separate. And uh, we'll start with that one because that's basically your whole ticket. Obviously, if that horse doesn't win, you lose. Uh, so we'll jump ahead to race four. Tell us why you're willing to hang your hat on this one. So, yeah, the um, six horse in the fourth race is from another mother. There doesn't seem to be a lot of pace in this race. The one horse in here, Complete Agenda, did beat him two back, but that was a race that had a super quick pace or, or a quick, more contested pace, and it was against, I would say, the level. Um, last time out, I'm sorry, against much better. Pace was contested. Today it looks like he should be able to get on a – somewhat fairly comfortable lead there's a couple horses in here that are a little the four, five man for example bread man's coming off a nice win but it was avoided claim the seven horse blue grotto has no early speed i'm not a big fan of the two horse dr love who's probably going to take some money here he's five to two on the line and then complete agenda is the horse that beat from another mother last time out versus tougher but that pace was a little quicker than i project today i don't think from another mother is going to be six to one. I think he's going to be more in the seven to two range. A lot of people are going to see that time form early pace projector. He's on 115 early speed. So I think he has a good chance. He has a good outside post as well because he won't be gun If he won't have to be gunned from the rail, if somebody decides to go on a mission, he can just sit off. But I think he will be able to take it early to him and hopefully he can hang on. He's got two career wins. They're both at Aqueduct. Got a win to go in the flat mile. So all signs look to a lone speed here, and hopefully we can get a little price home to, help, I guess, eliminate some of those chalks that look like they could win early. Right, and uh, being able to single there obviously gives you some options elsewhere to maybe be a little deeper. And before we get started with leg one, after looking at your single, did want to bring up the track trends tool. This is eight furlong races up to eight and a half, uh, so it would include mile 40, mile 70. Not sure if they've even run those, uh, but... Wanted to point out, uh, Inside actually has not been that great. Uh, this is over the last three weeks uh, going this trip. Uh, the middle positions, though, absolutely okay. Early speed, maybe not super great, um, which, you know, like you said, the six is long speed. But to me, the the main thing here, more so than looking at the, the speed and early stalker closer, is the middle post positions definitely – have a very strong uh, percentage over the far outside, which there aren't many of those because of the field size, but certainly the two inside. So this does seem like to be a, a great spot with a horse who we know can take control of the race. Uh, certainly going to get the jump on the favored Uno. And based on this, uh, from the middle post, going to get a better trip than Dr. Love. So I like it. Yeah, and this horse, I mean, 
He's not the horse. I don't think he's the horse he once was, but he was losing to Mo Donegal by a length who went on the win the War Memorial in the Belmont. He's faced my prankster, Judge Davis, Witt. I mean, he's faced a lot of really nice horses. So if he can just, I mean, he ran a 75 two back, which puts him right in range. The buyer part in here is an 82. He's ran in that range. So I think he's got a real good chance here to wire the field. And like you said, with the track um, post trends and all that, he's in post six, which has been good for Aqueduct. All right. Uh, again, that is race four, which is leg four, early pick five, first five races, 285 already in the pot, 15% take on our new money. David Single from another mother at number six, race four. Let's go now to the opener. You're three deep, uh, which uh, I don't mind. And this is anecdotal and a terrible way to bet. So I only mention it because it's on my mind. It should not factor in how you structure your tickets. It just seems like these obvious horses in the opening leg at Aqueduct do not live up to the hype uh, as much as uh, maybe you would expect given the odds. And we have that decision right off the rip with uh, number two, Sounds Spooky. Certainly on paper, the horse to beat, but man, it just seems like a tough way to, to start off if you get eliminated betting this horse. Yeah, he he's getting the um, Lasix for his first time because he's a newly turned three year old, obviously. But he hasn't really done that much running. He's faced better, I guess. Now that he was running against New York Breds, this is a open race. So, but I mean, this is probably about similar level to a main forty New York Bred. He just, I mean, if Todd Pletcher wasn't the trainer, I feel like this horse <laughs> wouldn't be four to five. So I think, I mean, no offense to the other trainers, but he's going against some trainers that don't have obviously his win percentage. So. I think he's – I guess he's the horse to beat, but I'm not going to – I wouldn't die on this hill with him. He, uh, he he hasn't really faced great company either in his New York bred races. It's not like he's coming out of killer New York bred main 40s. I think the six horses interesting in here, steady progress. His first two races were on a sloppy and good track. He's got one fast track race, and he ran a 46 buyer, which puts him obviously in range in this race. So as long as there's no – I didn't check the weather. Did you check the weather? It uh, looks – yeah, well, I should say I checked it yesterday, but it, I, I'm expecting a fast track. Yeah, so if Steady Progress gets a fast track, his best figure by far was on a fast track. So I think he's one that you could use. He's got another good outside post, post six and a six horse field, so has some tactical speed. And then there's a three horse stretching out to a mile for Charlie Baker, who's been on absolute fire this year. He's 23% at the current meet, which started on January 1st. He's also been running against open 20. So it's a similar level, same level. So I think in this race, I guess some people are going to probably single sound spooky. It'll be around even money range, but I think the three horse storm and D and the six horse steady progress on a fast track, give them a little upset chance. All right. Yeah. And uh, both uh, definitely at least looking at the Brisnap pace ratings, at least one of them figures uh, to be ahead of sound spooky throughout the early part of the race. And uh, sometimes that can make a difference. And we saw those, those inside posts, the one turn mile uh, haven't been great over the last three weeks, uh, race number two, which starts in early pick four, if you happen to get eliminated in the pick five. Uh, but for our purposes, leg two has uh, the only coupled entry and uh, another race where, uh, you know, in, in my mind, there's going to be an, an obvious favorite, maybe not odds on like in the opener. Uh, but I did think Blue Paint was uh, the, the most likely winner of this. Uh, but again, there's some vulnerability there, although I do appreciate it as a little more early zip than uh, Sound Spooky. Yeah, Blue Paint is coming out of much better races. He, um, she faced horses like Melting Smoke, Snow. She's faced My Sweet Wife, who just won an allowance race, I think, a couple weeks ago. So she definitely has faced the best company in here. The barn's a little chilly, um, but yeah, she's probably going to be odds on. The seven horse is interesting to me. Now, I don't know if it's Aqueduct because she's overrated Aqueduct, but before she came to Aqueduct, and which is probably not a good sign since this race is at Aqueduct, but before she got here, she was a really, really good horse for um at churchill and all those um tracks around here so i think she's got some back form that's a little interesting another good outside post but i do agree with you i think the three horse blue paint is probably going to be the one to beat in here all right and uh the deuce also on your ticket three deep uh to get us to race three which is where you are deepest and uh somewhat understandable because there's some questions to be had here two first time starters of the horses who have run, uh, the favorite, who is definitely looks the best on paper, just looking at the numbers, is 0 for 10. 
eight times second or third, so very wind shy while still running some races. Gets a jockey change from the bug to Eric Cancel, so that kind of stuck out to me. Is not the morning line favorite, though. That uh, designation goes to Spirit of St. Louis, Chad Brown, four-year-old gelding making his debut after a $300,000 purchase two and a half years ago. So uh, red flags are plenty on the top two choices, but obviously neither would surprise as a winner. Yeah, I think the three-horse spirit of St. Louis, I, I know he hasn't ran before, but it's a good sign they're not running him for a tag as a four-year-old gelding. He's not facing the best field, as we know. You said the favorite, um, Rafael, was 0 for 10 with five seconds. Those are not my kind of horses. But if the firster can't run, it kind of is a process of elimination with him. He's got the best races by far. <laughs> the eight horse is a little interesting. Eight and Sand got disqualified off a of maiden claimer 25 New York breads. And now they're bringing him back in a maiden special weight, which I don't know if it's a sign of confidence or they just did the racing office justice and ran him in here. But usually when you get disqualified from a maiden 25, you don't come back in a maiden special weight. So I think that horse is a little interesting on the outside. Probably going to have some speed. Um, tiebreakers, the five horse, 12 to one on the line, David Duggan, who took over for a lot, is taking over for some horses from Rich Schochberg and other people has done real well at this current meet. First time gelding might have some speed to the party. So I'd throw that one in there as a long shot. If you don't like the two favorites and why no love for uh squid gamer? Uh, the reason I ask is violence, 19% with his first time starters. Uh, the dam has four winners from five starters. Those are the things to like. Uh, negative, though, certainly uh, Charlie Baker, maybe not the best uh, first out or maiden special weight trainer. But, man, this group, I, I just see the the violence and I uh, think maybe he's worth 10 to 1, especially in a pick five, where if the money, if he's 4 to 1 on the board and you don't have him, then you're like, oh, crap. Yeah, I was kind of scared away by the stats, like you said, with Charlie Bra Baker and debuting at a mile. Mile's a tough distance to debut at. He is a four-year-old first-time starter like the three-horse. As unfortunately, this race is the third race. You won't be able to see the board to see how much money this Chad Brown right. horse takes. Because if you look at his last work, I mean, four furlongs, 48, six out of 69. I'm sure there's a little ability there if they're, like I said, not running. But, yeah, if you six-horse squid gamers at first year, but that's Charlie Baker's not really – my guy, first time out going a mile. But if you like a first in this race, this is not a bad Did one. Did you watch Squid Games? Is this going to be bad when I have no idea what that is? <laughs> it was a show on Netflix. Your uh, your players uh, would definitely be familiar. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've never never seen Squid Games. Is that why you it's like Squid Gamers because of the show? Is that why you're – uh, I did like the show, and I'll tell you, there actually is a racing tie-in because the guy plays Squid Games, which is like this thing to the death to earn money because mm -hmm. he's in debt from being bad at gambling on horses. Mm -hmm. So there's a tie-in. Yeah. Some people can relate to that, I think, with horse racing. <laughs> yeah. and gambling. I've yet to have to fight to the death to uh, pay a debt, but uh, <laughs> yeah. stay tuned. Race four is the single. Uh, we'll pop the ticket up again to refresh everybody. Number six in race four, David, uh, on the uh, the lone speed kick there. Can't say I disagree. Also agree with David. We probably won't get six to one, but we might get the value in the pick five because uh, people will see that, maybe be less likely to single. I think uh, that's a good play to narrow there. And if we get through it, Three deep in the last in another case where, in my mind, there's a obvious favorite. He's five to two on the line. I expect him to be less. Uh, Mott for Godolphin. Spell Torini, number eight, uh, another one of those horses to beat. But he hasn't won yet in five tries. Others, uh, actually, fabulously funny is the uh, the morning line favorite. We'll see if that holds up. Yeah, I don't I know, know about Spel that one. Spell Torini is the one to beat. Yeah, I don't know about Fabulous Funny being two to one because the horse she lost to came back to run into stakes two weeks ago and did absolutely nothing. So I don't know how much money she'll take. She ran a mm -hmm. slow 59 buyer, but I guess in this field, uh, she improves a little to the 70 range. I guess she'd be a major player. I was very interested in the four horse in here, Swanson Lake. First time starter, McCarthy does not ship many horses to Aqueduct in the winter. He's only shipped two this meet, one the Jerome and then ran third with another horse so looks like she's got a good she has a good work tab at churchill a couple bullet drills on the page constitution's obviously a good side first outsider so 
I'm a little interested in the four in here. Obviously, we won't be able to see the board before the pick five starts, but the eight horse Spelderini's had plenty of chances while she's a must use. I guess the seven could improve second out, but I'm going to be playing Swanson Lake in here if she's anywhere around the three to one range. She's got her four to one on the line, but I think she's probably see around three to one. All right. You'll be hoping to be live three deep to close out uh, what I think will be a million dollar pool of new money. Uh, maybe yeah. a bit. Maybe they'll get to 1.5 total with the carryover. It, it wouldn't surprise me. No, I, I completely agree with you. I completely agree with you. When people see these pick five carryovers are so rare, they're going to dive in. And I do think there are some favorites that I bet. Then again, like, I'm sure on Sunday, they look like they were favorites. They're good. Aqueduct's been a little chaotic lately. So could beat some favorites in here. My single six to one. I don't know if you'll get that, but probably seven to two range might get a little price in there and hopefully live to three in the last three horses. Now, will you have a sheet or did you just do this ticket for our uh, benefit? No, we got the sheet. I grinded right. out the last three races. The last three races are actually good too, especially race six and seven. They're actually both good races. So yeah, we'll have all eight races up. Yeah, after my big uh, row uh, regarding the uh, the takeout amounts on the various carryovers, I opted to just focus on the early with you. But that leaves people plenty of reason uh, to avail themselves to the full card selections. Eight races on Pick Friday. Six carryover. Are you doing fairgrounds Saturday? Yeah, I will be. I will be doing fairgrounds. We got fairgrounds Saturday, Gulfstream Saturday. Love it. So there's um 472 races between the two. What do you mean? I think the f- Gulfstream has 13 races, and the fairgrounds has 12. Or I think they have like 12 and they 13, have 13 races as well. Down. Yeah. Yeah, Gulfstream had to run 12 races on a Saturday in the middle of February. Of course, they. Ha- I mean, <laughs> it's yeah. a championship meet. So. Yeah, it was six to Peter races, but yeah, we'll be doing, I'll be doing both tracks. All right, so. Gulfstream and Fairgrounds Saturday, Aqueduct Friday, carryover, early pick five, one through five, carryover in the pick six as well. That's three through eight, and uh, hopefully we'll be dishing next week on a uh, big win. Hopefully so. Looking forward to it. All right, that's David Lovich. He's the Paddock Prince. Picks.horseracingnation.com. Good luck Friday, Saturday, every day you play. We'll talk to you next week.